this is what we have here. You're gonna start feeling this aroma. This is not gonna kill you. Blah, 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 ingredients. About these board beans. Cut. We don't have time, sorry. Hello foodies, how are you doing? I hope you're doing well as always. Today, I'm bringing you a dish that might help you in case you're going through winter right now in your country, in your region, city, etc. And this is a quinoa soup. If you've been in Peru before, I'm pretty sure you have tried it. It's a really simple soup, but really tasty and full of flavor. But before telling you about the soup and showing you how to make this, let's talk a little bit about the quinoa. Cut. Quinoa is one of the most important superfoods that you might know as the Inca's food. In Peru, we have over 3,000 kinds of quinoa. And that is a result of a research that a university from Lima released seven years ago. From all these thousands kinds of quinoa, there are three that are the most common that we find in the markets every time. The white quinoa, the red quinoa, and the black quinoa. But in Cusco, or in Peru in general, you can find also yellow quinoa. Yes, yellow. Between these three kinds, there are a couple of differences between the level and protein. In theory, the white quinoa has approximately 8% of protein, and the black quinoa has around 13%. The red one would be in the middle with approximately 11% of it. The other difference between this is not the flavor. Quinoa has not really a flavor. You can try it raw. Well, not raw, cooked. <laughs> you can try it cooked without salt and it's gonna taste like nothing. The difference between these three would be the texture. The texture of the white one is a bit more, I would say, mushy. I use it always for making soups and there's a drink we make here. It's one of the most common street food breakfasts that you find. It's a quinoa drink with fruits, it's really good. The red and the black are a bit more crunchy and I use it for replacing the rice and for salads, for example. The texture is a bit different, but that also depends how you cook it. You can overcook it or you can cook it to the point to make it ready to eat, but still gonna be a bit crunchy. So for this delicious and easy to make soup, this is what we need. Blah, 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 ingredients. Blah, 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 ingredients. We're gonna start with the onion, take the head off, cut it in two, and you always decide if you wanna take the heart out. You can see it's something, a little green sprout. I prefer to leave this there. As I'm gonna cook this in low, low fire, this is gonna help me to get the flavor I really want here. Then, carefully and with a really sharp knife, we're gonna start cutting it, as you always know, little by little. Remember, take your time and always be careful. In this case, I'm using white onion, but you can use red onion if you want to. I prefer to use this white onion for the soup. The flavor is slightly bit different. This is what I want here right now. About the garlic, we usually take the garlic cloves Press it down with a knife, it makes it easier to peel it. So then I take the head out, peel it, and after that, we always open the garlic. We cut it in two to see if there's a little a green germ, if it's sprouting. If it is, we take it out. We all know already that germ in the middle has a bit of flavor and that doesn't help us at all. If it doesn't, like in this case, that was minimum, we just start chopping this in brunoise again. So for base seasoning, as small as you can. You decide if you want to chop this nicely, one by one, like with the onion. Slice, slice, and chop. But I'm pretty sure if you have 200 pounds of garlic to chop, you're not gonna do it like that. So just take everything over there and start chopping it like this. Everything together. Let's just chop it as small as we can. Now we have here the leek. It's leek, are you sure? Leek. In Spanish it's called puerro, but in this case we're gonna use only the white part. We're gonna open this, we're gonna take some of the old leaves on the top. We're gonna cut it in two and then we're gonna start chopping. Only the white part. About the leaves, I don't think you should get rid of them because there's something we can do. It's called a bouquet garni. A bouquet garni is just a little package full of aromatic herbs and that's what they're gonna do. They're gonna add aroma to the stalks, to the soups, etc. And this is what we use. This, as well as the onion, are parts of the base seasoning of this. About the quinoa, this is an ingredient that, if possible, we have to have it ready in advance the day before. 
because this contains something that we have to get rid of. We need half a cup of white quinoa, as I suggested before, that I use it more for soups. But you can use any quinoa that you want, or even the tricolored quinoa, if that's what you have at home. For this, it's good that we soak the, wa the water in quinoa. <laughs> oh my god, so stupid. It's good that we soak the quinoa in water for many hours, but it would be better if you do it the night before. This is to take the saponin out of the quinoa. Saponin is a chemical that is found in many in many grains and in many plants, and this causes a bitter flavor on it. There are pros and cons about this happening, but there are many cons about it actually, so let's get rid of it. There are dry and wet methods to get rid of the saponins. We're doing the wet because we don't have the tools or technology <laughs> for the dry one. But, for example, when you go uh, to store and buy a package quinoa that is 100% free of saponins, I'm 100% sure they use both ways. That's the best way you can assure the best quality of products, the best quality of quinoa in this case. About the squash, what is the squash? This is what we have here. And this is how this looks complete. Did it appear, right? I don't know if you find this at home. It's not that similar than the zucchini. But at home, you can use zucchini, you can use another kind of pumpkin, find many options. I know you can figure this out and you're good. So for this, the way to clean it is easy. We just take the skin out. We're gonna cut this in medium-sized cubes. We need approximately one cup of this. With coriander, we don't really have to chop the whole thing. We don't have to mince it or anything. You can if you want. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, how you call it? String? String? Well, the whole thing. And I'm just gonna cut it in three. I really like releasing the flavor of this in the soup and you're gonna see how I'm gonna do it later. Now with the potato, I'm gonna use white potato. So this one is really good for boiling. It's not too sandy. It doesn't boil that fast. The texture of this potato, when you boil it, it's gonna still be quite consistent, quite strong, really tasty, of course. First of all, we have to peel it. And when we peel it, we also need to make sure we take these little holes and these little sprouts that come out of it. In this case, I have a really good potato, but in case you have a sprouted potato, might not be the best option to eat. This is sprouted potatoes contain, contains higher levels of, what? Of glycoalkaloids or glycoalkaloids. How does it pronounce? Glycoalkaloids. 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 You idiot, glycoalkaloids. Glycoalkaloids, which can be toxic for humans when it's eating in excess, in big amounts. This is not gonna kill you. What doesn't kill you makes you but can cause problems from the stomach to the heart and the nervous system. So yeah, it can maybe kill you. Let's hope not. In this case, we're gonna cut the potatoes in cubes. We always check that in the middle, there are no holes or anything weird that shouldn't be there. So the idea is to make everything in medium-sized cubes. All of them, if possible, in the same size, so everything gets cooked together in the pot. About these board beans, the beans are bored sometimes. About the broad beans, we normally peel it to cook it. But based on specialist nutritionists, they recommend to eat the skin. It's eatable, of course, the flavor is a tiny bit different. But they, they recommend this because of all the nutrition it has. A lot, a lot of good stuff there. I don't know exactly what. Whether if you decided to take it out or not, this gets cooked really fast, in like five minutes. About our carrot, really simple. Just peel it, cut it in cubes, perfect or not, there you go. If you want the perfect ones, you make you square the carrot, and there you go, little by little, making beautiful ones. In this case, yeah, I'm making it square because I'm using the skin for something else. I'm smart. I am smart. Now that we have everything ready, let's start making our delicious soup. First, we're gonna put a pot and we need a really, but really low fire. In this case, we are not gonna use any oil when the pot's still quite cold. I'm gonna add the onion. Right after I add the onion, I'm gonna add the leek. Little by little, it's all gonna get hot and I can't let this get like burned or something. So if we have a really low fire for the first minutes, the onion, little by little, is gonna start sweating. So we have to just stir, stir this really well, and little by little, you're gonna see how at the bottom of the pot is gonna get a bit bright, and that's the onion sweating. So this is a good sign. Keep like that, and don't move the fire. 
keep it really low at the minimum level possible. Then little by little, of course, this is gonna get hotter and hotter. And then you're gonna start hearing this the sound of the, the onion getting cooked. You're gonna start feeling this aroma. It's gonna start releasing it. At that moment, we are gonna add the garlic, we are gonna stir, and we're gonna let this beautiful smell to get around you. You keep stirring, and you're gonna see everything keeps getting cooked. But probably, probably it's getting a bit dried. If that happens, you can add a bit of water, but of course, stock would be better. Just a little bit to keep it hydrated and let it get cooked. So this is just the first part of our base seasoning. We need to add a couple of more things in a moment. It's been 12 minutes since I turned on the pan and started cooking this. As I've been cooking with really low temperature, I'm making sure this doesn't get burned and it's releasing its flavor little by little. And this is what we want here. So it's ready to get the fire a little bit stronger, but just a little bit more. And now it's time to add more flavor to this base seasoning. We are gonna add salt or pepper, the cumin, the oregano, followed by our cilantro. If you don't like cilantro or coriander, you can use some parsley if you want, this is up to you. But let me tell you that cilantro really adds a really nice touch to this. Right after that, we add a bit more stock so we don't let this get dried and let it cook for two minutes. So all these flavors and aromas are gonna get really stronger. What I love doing is taking my spoon and pressing the cilantro. That's gonna make the cilantro release even more aroma, more flavor. You're gonna get crazy at that point, I know that. As we've cooked it for a couple of minutes, after all the ingredients we added, of course, we are ready to add, to add the main ingredient, our king, well, not, not king, that will be the queen. We're gonna add our, our quinoa. Add all of it. All the quinoa that we had at the beginning was half a cup, previously soaked in water, of course, as you know. We're gonna put it inside. Right after that, we put all the leftover stock. That should be eight cups of it. After we stir and we put the lid on, we're gonna let it cook in medium fire, medium low, never too high. We don't want to reduce this over here. After 20, 25 minutes, you're gonna check again. You're gonna try a little bit of the soup with the quinoa, especially. This is gonna take you, depending where you are, I'm in the island, so things get more time to cook here. But whatever you are, Check it between in between 15, 20 minutes, and you can see if it's cooked or not yet. First, I checked 25 minutes after I let it boil, and it wasn't ready yet. I'm checking again, and it's been 33 minutes. I tried the soup, I tried the quinoa, and it's perfect. But there's something else you have to try, the potato. As you remember, well, you don't remember because probably I didn't tell you, these broad beans, whether if you decide to take the skin out or not, they get cooked really fast. So they take between four and six, seven minutes to get cooked. We're gonna put it in, all of it. We're gonna put the lid on. Well, before we put the lid on, we start, of course. And we're gonna let it cook for other five minutes approximately. After that, turn it off and get ready to enjoy your soup. So it's a moment to serve our delicious soup. I can't wait to try it. This smells really good. Wow, it's a lot of quinoa, a lot of vegetables. I really love this. And here we are, this whole plate of soup. Did I put too much? You can see the color of this. It's like zero, zero fat. We use no oil, we use no... Normally when you use chicken or beef, you can see these little bubbles like oil, odor. This has nothing, this is pure. So even when you feel sick, when you have stomach problems, this is gonna be a really good option for you. I hope you enjoyed this, I hope you can make this at home. And remember, you can replace any ingredient you see here. You can add beef, you can add chicken, you can do whatever you prefer. But following these steps, remember the temperature at the beginning and everything we did today. So thank you so much for this. I hope to see you soon.
as well as the as well as the other uh, uh, inside uh, the arena. So uh, 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 well, I said this before, and I'm gonna say it again. We uh, forget it. How do you peel with this? Don't put this in the video.